what do you think about the trend of guys adding HCG to TRT? It's logical because the TRT clinic can sell it at $800 a bottle. So it's another way for them. They've got slots. And if they try to fill every slot, they can make three, five grand a month off of each dumb patient. Like Brian Thompson, the liver king, is a perfect example of this. That guy had more money than brains, and they just ripped him the fuck off. He had a but he had the dumbest fucking cycle I've ever seen. It was so goddamn dumb. He had redundant shit. He had Anavar and Winstrol. He had GH and Secretagogues. They got him for everything. That guy was dumb as fuck. He bought it hook, line, and sinker. It's just like all that dumb bitch needed was testosterone and GH. All the rest of it was completely in the umbrella of what the test and the GH did. You didn't need any of that other shit if you used test and GH. And then he overpaid for the GH too. He paid like 10 grand a month for GH that he could have gotten for 20 bucks, for 200 bucks probably. 200 bucks would have gotten the same amount of GH as he was getting for 12 grand. That's how much of a ripoff HRT clinics are. So... The HCG, I got around it 10 years ago with um, sodium deaspartate. So I've got a product called Thor's Hammer I've seen that it. I invented. Originally, it was called Rise and Swell for a different brand. And then I made it again for my brand called the Thor's Hammer. And that will normally, HCG will suppress LH release, whereas um, the Sodium deaspartate will cause LH release and it will also stimulate the um, testes to produce testosterone directly. So I got around it in that I found an over-the-counter product that was as effective. It isn't as strong as using a lot of HCG, but it's a reasonable thing to use if all you're trying to do is keep your testicles alive while you're on cycle. And then it does other stuff too. So it, it, you can keep your balls the full size and some people see their, their testicles increase in size within 12 hours of taking it. So if all they're looking for is a bigger balls or a bigger load because their girlfriend likes a bigger load, then that's an acceptable alternative. If you want to use HCG to protect your nuts, that's fine. But what these guys don't know because their TRT clinics are liars is that that doesn't protect your Sertoli cells. It just protects your Leydig cells. So you're not going to hang on to your sperm count. This has nothing to do with sperm production. This is just testosterone. Nothing's going to protect your sperm unless you're taking FSH. And that would be so mind-numbingly expensive because there's no black market FSH that it's basically you wait until it's time to get someone pregnant and then you use LA, you use the HCG and the FSH to get someone pregnant. You can stay on a TRT dose, and for people that have short attention spans, I said the TRT dose would be 20 milligrams of test, two units of GH a day. You would just add to the same syringe, you know, four or 500 micrograms of HCG and 75 FSH. And if you can't afford to do 75 FSH every day, do it every other day. I know I say do everything every day, but with FSH, there's a threshold effect. You have to hit 75. Anything less than 75 doesn't trigger the threshold in the test subjects. You could be an outlier, but you don't know you're an outlier until you've blown several months of a fortune just to find out you're an outlier. So rather than playing Russian roulette with your pocketbook, just do it the right way and use 75 minimum and do that 75 as frequently as you can afford. Don't shortchange it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You'll get girls pregnant this way. I've helped lots of girl guys get their girlfriends pregnant or wives pregnant. Yeah, absolutely. I, I actually wrote a book uh, two years ago with that protocol in there so that people could just have access to it because there was just so much nonsense about guys thinking they needed to run HCG between when they start TRT until when they want to get someone pregnant. And it's like, well, not only is that going to potentially cause a bunch of side effects, but if that worked, then we wouldn't need fertility protocols, would we? I mean, if that worked, then it wouldn't be a problem. Um, but it doesn't because the amount of HCG you'd have to take to spill over into FSH to get even any activation of Sertoli cells is like, I, I think it's like 1500 units multiple times a week to even just get a tiny bit of activation. But you're exactly right. If you ran FSH indefinitely, you'd be broke. 
Um, so I found that protocol. I mean, I publish it on YouTube for free as well, put it in my book so that everyone can copy and paste it and take it to their provider. And I'm the only time I've seen it fail has been when people had no chance of re recovering their fertility, like testicular cancer, morbid obesity, stuff like that, where it was never going to happen. But I've, I've never seen it fail to date. But when it comes to the HCG stuff, it, it's something that I've, I've been glad to see that it's kind of died out over time. It seemed like it was a fad that kind of came in and out and people seem to be moving away from it, which, which I think is fantastic because it just creates more problems and it doesn't really solve anything.